The story starts 10 days ago. The boy's name is Max and he grew up without a mom. His father, a fisherman, said he would teach him to swim if he could learn to hold his breath. As a result, he went out to sea once and encountered a big storm. His dad also died and he could only rely on his grandfather for his life. With little presence, Max has always been the target of bullying in class. His classmates either ran errands without paying or experimented on him. On this day, Max suddenly receives the news that something has happened to his grandfather. After his grandfather's funeral, Max went to the beach alone and scattered his grandfather's ashes into the seawater. But the dust got in his eyes and he accidentally fell into the sea. These ten years of his life kept sinking as it is now. At this time Max made a wish. The sea, if you are going to give me a miracle, I hope it is a beautiful mermaid to save me. After being rescued to the shore, he sees a back figure, and the frightened Max scrambles to get the urn which has fallen to the side. As a result, a man jumped out from the bat, and the opening scene happened. Max, who is too scared to care about his pants, runs all the way to the alley and bumps into his good friend Chaya. After some explanation, Chaya is obviously not convinced. At this point, Max receives a phone call, which turns out to be from the cake store. He had wanted to have his grandfather's birthday cake ready, but it was too late. Chaya, in an attempt to comfort Max, said that she wanted to eat it. So, Max went to pick up the cake anyway. In the evening, Max runs the water and gets ready to take a bath, reminiscing about the time he spent with his dad and grandpa growing up. As a result, the next moment, he realizes that the man who attacked him at the beach is outside the bathtub and jumps in all at once. What's even more horrifying is that the man's legs turn into fishtails when he gets into the bathtub. The panicked Max escapes the bathtub, but he is fainted by the man's tail. It turns out that during the daytime, the mermaid had been playing happily in the sea. But when he saw Max's face in the sea, he saved Max in a confused way. Then, for some reason he couldn't restore his tail after it turned into legs. He lies on the beach, flopping around like a deaf fish. He had no choice but to return to Max's house. Max saw that the mermaid was actually eating the cake given to his grandfather, and angrily rushed up to him and punched him. Yet his steel wasn't as hard as the mermaid's head. For some reason, his legs turned into a fist then. Chaya and King come looking for Max. Max sends the two away by falsely claiming that the mermaid is his cousin for their safety. He also escapes the house when the mermaid is off guard. Tan it. Max rushes out of the road only to be hit by a big Ben. The driver is a classmate who has been bullying him at school, and instead of taking him to the hospital, he drives off, and the scene is watched by the mermaid Chuan. He went up to help Max and put his head gently on Max's forehead. A golden light flashed and Max was saved again. The next day, Max wakes up and realizes that the wounds on his body are still there. But they don't hurt. The wounds don't hurt. Chaya, who comes to care, thinks he's brain damaged and is outright pissed off. Max sees the mermaid inside his own bathtub and realizes that he saved him. Max then takes the mermaid to the supermarket. Even though he knew it was the other guy who saved him, he was still scared. He was going to get rid of the mermaid and run, but ran into his home teacher. In desperation, he named the mermaid Luli, saying that he was his cousin. Back home, Max cooks for the mermaid and recalls the image of his grandfather, teaching him how to cook fish. Lou eats it with rave reviews. At this point, Lou tells Max that there is a legend in the mermaid world that if someone has saved them, then they must fulfill one of his wishes. In order to get the mermaids out of his house as soon as possible, Max googles the question. There was a 70-year-old aunt who answered truthfully. She said she once saved a mermaid when she was 20 years old. Before the mermaid left, they said goodbye and kissed on the beach. And after the kiss, the lower half of his body instantly turned into a fish tail and went back to the sea. Max is torn in his mind, wondering if he should let him kiss. But the mermaid doesn't think this is a good idea. It occurred to Max again that by helping the human grant his wish, the mermaid would be able to turn back into a fish tail and return to the sea. So he started to think of making a wish that Lu Li could help him fulfill his wish and then turn back into a fish tail to go back to the sea. But Lu questioned that he should wait until he returns to the sea before he can change back to the fish tail. Right. On the other hand, Nick is chagrined that he bumped into Max and thinks that Max must be in a bad way. But to his surprise, he sees Max show up at school unharmed at the start of summer counseling sessions. The man he thought was surely dead turns up in front of him. Nick first made a confirmation to see if he was really okay, after learning that the other person was really fine. With curiosity and his original habit of bullying, Nick pushed Max into the position of acting class president. Max had no choice but to be chosen, which made his already sad life even sadder. The class trash has to be taken out, and even the pool, which the entire class is supposed to clean, becomes his job alone. Luckily, 
Chaya helps him out and saves him from taking out the trash. While cleaning the pool, Lu suddenly appears. Still on to legs, he didn't make it back to the ocean. He thinks that Max didn't make a wish with his heart, so he couldn't turn into a fishtail to go back to the sea. Angry, he pushed Max into the pool. Max, who could not swim, sank to the bottom of the pool. Lo, who was on the shore, wanted to walk away without a care in the world, but accidentally overheard Max's inner monologue. In the end, he couldn't get past himself and still jumped into the water to save Max. Unexpectedly, the mermaid is able to hear his own heart, to which Max is very shocked. After this, Lu manages to leave in Max's house again. At school, Jaya, who helped Max, is targeted by two classmates for scribbling in her textbook. Seeing the scribbling, Max gets angry too, but he still doesn't put words in his mouth. Jaya, who was about to continue reasoning, is interrupted by the class bell. The home teacher brings in a new student, which is Lu who is supposed to be at home. Max is surprised and at the same time afraid that something will happen to him. As a result, his classmate passes him a note to pass the answers to Kenan during the exam. Because Lu hears his heart, he directly says it for him, which surprises a few people a lot. Chaya had to report to the teacher about the scribbling in the textbook in order to help him hide it. The teacher criticizes the two students, and Max's inner words are almost read up by Lu. Luckily, Max stops it in time, but still lets his classmates know about the scribbles. Lu said that Chaya's mom is not the third party. Before she could finish her sentence, Max stopped her. Chaya is embarrassed, and Max ignores Lu because he thinks it's all Lu's fault. While looking at Max's room, Lu sees a photo album and accidentally flips to a picture of her grandfather. Lu is surprised to learn that 10 years ago, he was accidentally salvaged by humans. Just when he was passed out, it was his grandfather who saved him back to the sea. The grandfather who saved Lu made a wish related to Max when he was dying. That's why Lu saw Max's face in the ocean. And when he was washed ashore by the current, he brought Max, who had fallen into the ocean, ashore with him. Lu asks Max to think about what grandpa would probably wish for. Max thinks about his grandfather's suicide note, and he tells himself that he must try hard to live, no matter what people say or think, he must do his best to live happily in his own way. Grandpa wanted him to live happily. Max asks if there is a way to bring Grandpa back to life, but Lou explains that even though Max was dying last time, he's not dead yet, and that he can only use this power once, and he'll die if he uses it again. Moreover, counting from the time Lou goes ashore, within 49 days, if he doesn't fulfill his grandfather's wish, he will turn into a bubble. So, Lu wants Max to think about whether he has any other wishes besides resurrecting his grandfather. For example, does he want to fall in love? Does he want to fall in love with Chaya? Max panics and explains that he really doesn't like Chaya. They're just good friends. After thinking about it for a while, Max finally came up with a wish. He wanted to learn how to swim so that he would be happy to. After the last incident of scribbling in his textbook, Chaya had been ignoring Max. When he was a kid, Chaya and his mom had just moved here, and Grandpa brought Max to congratulate him on the housewarming. As a result, Chaya's mom got a little too drunk and started spouting off about Chaya's dad, saying that he didn't want them anymore because he had a woman outside. That's why Max knew about it. Despite this, Chaya still believes that Max will not say anything, and feeling sorry for Chaya, Max comes to the kiosk and under the pretext of buying something, he actually comes to apologize to Chaya. He explains that it really wasn't him who said it and that he didn't tell Lu. Chaya acts outwardly disgusted, but chooses to believe Max. Max, who comes out, is much relieved to know that Chaya believes him. Lu, who is waiting for Max outside, is working on a game console. Max knows that King threw it, but he doesn't want to talk about it. But since Lu's mission, right now, is to make Max have a good time, when he senses that Max is not happy right now, he keeps asking him why he is not happy. Max knows how he can get past Lu Li and has no choice but to tell him what happened. It turns out that the night before his grandfather died, King excused himself to go to his own house to do his homework and ended up playing games all night without coming home. The next day, he went straight to school, only to receive the news that Grandpa had passed away. In fact, Grandpa did call Max at night and told him to come home early, but due to the damn desire to win and lose, Max insisted on doing until dawn and missed the time when he could have saved his grandfather. Actually. He didn't blame King, he was only blaming myself. It was his own choice to stay behind that prevented them from saving Grandpa in time. So from that day on, the two were strangers. On the other hand, King took his pocket money and gave it to Kenan. But in Max's name, he wanted Kenan to stop bullying Max. King knew that if he hadn't started the game, Max would have been able to go home, and Grandpa wouldn't have gone away like that. He was the one who had apologized to Grandpa and to Max. Self-accusation makes him not dare to approach Max easily and he can only silently do what he can for him. In order to solve this matter, 
Lu pulled Max to King and pushed Max into the swimming pool. King watched Max, who couldn't swim, floundering in the water and didn't hesitate to jump in and save him. The two then finally get this off their chests in the swimming pool as well. King zaps Cannon Spike, causing Cannon to have an accident on his way home. Max was asked by his home teacher to bring fruits to visit him in the ward. At the entrance of the ward, Max meets King. King pretends that he is worried about something happening to Cannon, so he has come to visit him, but to run into Cannon, who is losing his temper with his mom. Cannon's mom tells them that when they were in KHS, King beat up a classmate from the next class so badly that they later took that classmate to the her. She took care of the classmate's wounds first, then when she was about to check on Cannon afterward, he disappeared. From that day on, they rarely talked to each other. After dropping off their end, the two of them went to the hospital room, but they didn't see Cannon. A weak-minded King thought he had been discharged and breathed a sigh of relief. It turns out that Cannon is waiting for him to come out in the restroom. Cannon says he thinks the crash wasn't an accident. Someone did it on purpose. Max quickly asks him if he's ever thought about who would have poisoned him so badly. But Cannon surprisingly thought that it was someone else who was jealous of his talent. And that person surely wouldn't be Max and Keen. He also wanted them to sign his cast to show that they were friends now. On their way back, Max was still happy about going to see Cannon today. He didn't expect King to tell him a big secret. He punctured the tire of Cannon's bike. Max was so surprised that he thought King must be sick in the head. After having a hard time getting along with that guy, you're telling me that you're the one who punctured the tire. Isn't that just sick in the head? But King said that if he had done it, then their relationship wouldn't be so good. So it couldn't be his fault. It had to be said that King's logical ability was really strong. This all made sense to him. Max was really pissed off by him. In the classroom, two students actually asked Lou to clean up. Lou said, shouldn't you all be instructed by the class monitor to do these things? Shouldn't each of you be responsible for it? Just when Lou was about to get angry, Nick came out to speak for him. After the two students left, he took the initiative to invite Lou to dinner and talk about Max. What Nick didn't expect was that Lou agreed so quickly. When they arrive at Nick's house, Lou devours the food in such a way that Nick can't hold it in and can only add a little bit of food into the mix. Nick kept getting close to Lou and asked about Max at home or if anything had happened to him. Lou doesn't even think about it and says that he was hit by a car the other day and almost died. And that Nick was the one who did. Nick wants Lou to help him keep his secret and be weak and take him out to dinner all this week. But Lou outright refuses because he wants to be late for all this delicious food whenever he wants. This comment scares Nick to death. Also, Lou stopped by to ask about the contents of Grandpa's suicide note. Nick said that if a guy has a crush on a girl, he should say it quickly. And if that girl agrees to accept it, then everyone will be happy. Understanding Lu went to the kiosk after dinner and asked Chaya if she wanted to mate with Long Ji. As a result, Lu gets punched directly by Chaya. Back home, Max talks to Lu about visiting Cannon today. And by the way, he also mentions King's puncture of Cannon's tire. Max can see that Lu is not very excited. Lu then says that he's unhappy because he doesn't know how to make Max happy and tells him all about his visit to Chaya and the beating he got. <laughs> And just Max rushes to get dressed to find Chaya, but ends up standing at the door, afraid to go in. At this time, Lu also chased out and said something to Chaya again. Max can even stop him. So Chaya closes the door, and Max is pissed off at Lu. Max tells Lu that what he's doing doesn't make him feel happy at all because he's not doing it his way. But Lu insists that he is just trying to make Max happy first, when he can't stand it any longer. Max tells Lu to get lost, and that he'll be happy as long as he doesn't see Lu again. However, Lou is really rolling cabbage. Max, who was infuriated by Ren Yu's maneuver, directly grabbed the cabbage and left the house. Because of what Lou said, Max keeps trying to apologize to Chaya, but Chaya clearly doesn't want to pay attention to him. Chaya doesn't speak to him until the end of the school day. But Kenan's relationship with Max and Kin, because of the hospitalization, went from bullying and being bullied in the beginning to becoming friends. When Max is bullied by his classmates, Kenan avenges him. He solemnly declares that from now on, Max and Kin are his friends, and anyone who dares to bully them is messing with himself. Also because of Max and Kin, the relationship between Cannon's mother and son eases a lot. The class teacher is concerned about Lu's study. Lu asks him for advice because he doesn't know how to deal with people, and tells him about Max puncturing the tires of Cannon's car. The home teacher told him that he should never tell anyone about this incident. First, he is afraid that others will learn the joke. Secondly, if Cannon knew about it, he would be angry, and then he would retaliate and then Max would suffer. As a result, all the words of the two men got into the ears of Nick. That night, Lou went to Nick's house for dinner again, 
and accidentally saw the message in Nick's cell phone. Thinking about what the homeroom teacher said and worrying about Max getting beaten up, he ran home to look for Max before he had enough to eat. And after Max explains to Chiao, he also sees the message in the group, afraid that King will be beaten by the cannons. So he goes straight outside to look for King. So the two just missed it. And when Max found King, King was actually eating seafood with Big Cannon. Big Cannon even laughed and said that once he thought that he was sapping his argumentative sky for Max and paying that protection fee for him, he felt that King was a very good friend. Just like that, the three of them smoothly became real friends. And at this time, Lou was still out looking for Max. The sky suddenly started to rain, and Lou's legs unexpectedly turned into fish tails in the rain. When Max realizes that Lou is not back yet, he also goes outside to look for him anxiously. In the middle of the street, he sees Lou, who was almost hit by a car. After realizing that Lou came out to look for him because he was worried about him, Max was touched and hugged Lou. But after three seconds, he couldn't hold Lou anymore. In the end, Max found a small car and transported Lou back to his home. Who knew that when he opened the door, Chaya and King were actually at home. They had come specially to help Max celebrate his birthday. So, the two of them saw Lou's fish tail without any problem. They really are mermaids, the two of them, who saw a mermaid for the first time, were instantly excited. After that, the two also learned that Grandpa saved Lou and Lou is coming to return the favor. Since the cake was spoiled, Chaya put a candle on the soap and asked Max to make a wish. For his first wish, he wished for everyone to be healthy and safe. For his second wish, he wished that everyone could get into the university of their choice. The third wish, please let Lou be safe and sound and go back to the sea where he belongs. Lou was happy to hear that Max had made a wish about himself. Probably no one had ever cared about him, and the feeling of being valued for the first time made him happy. After the group of friends play happily together, Chaya gives Max a gift, a box of hair clay, which Chaya is afraid Max won't know how to use and teaches him personally. The two of them are getting closer and closer, and the atmosphere is getting more and more ambiguous. But at this moment, Lu appears out of nowhere. <laughs> Chaya went home in embarrassment. The next day, Max uses the hair clay to go to school, like a different person, with much more confidence, but Lu is a little confused about him. The school is having a swimming competition, and the homeroom teacher wants Max to be in charge of the competition. Max has always been afraid of the water, because of his father's death at sea and has never learned to swim, since no one in the class listens to him, and he's afraid no one will participate in the competition. He's anxious, unexpectedly. Nick hears a few more people and learns that Max can't swim, so when Max talks about the swim meet, Nick signs up and repeatedly offers to let Max take the lead. Lou sees this and outright warns him that if he forces Max to swim, he will drown. And the last time he hit Max with his car, he was fine because he was there. Nick didn't expect that Lou would be among the ones to bring up the fact that he hit Max. He wisecracks about how he'd be standing over there fine now if it had really happened. But when Lou told him the license plate number of Nick's car, Max knew it was Nick who hit him, thinking that Nick had been giving him a hard time since the beginning of summer vacation. Max was so angry that he wrote his name on the board. He then asked aloud who else wanted to sign up. Cannon and Max duly signed up, but as soon as it was over, Max regretted it again. He shouldn't have been so feisty. This is, Chaya comes to compliment Max, not realizing that he would look so handsome with a new hairstyle. Max tells Lou to go away, but Lou just won't go away, until Chaya steps in and pushes him. He curses and walks away, but he thinks humans are so strange. Chaya is afraid that Max will still be afraid of swimming. So Max smoothly offers to let Chaya teach him. Chaya agrees. The two have a deal. Lou can't figure out human emotions and why people become stupid when they fall in love with someone, even if it costs them their lives. The homeroom teacher explains that love is a kind of selfless giving. On the other hand, Max asks Lou to teach him how to swim in advance, but he is dumbfounded by Lou's swimming style. Even swimmer don't swim like this, although part of the reason he signed up for the competition was to make Chaya think he was handsome. It was more to fulfill his childhood dream. Max had always thought that if he learned how to swim, his dad would still be by his side, even though he knew it was never going to happen. Lou looks at Max and this time realizes what Max is really thinking, so he decides to go home and start teaching from the basics. But Lou's barking was so strong that it almost knocked Max out. So he gets Jaya, who is of equal strength, to teach him, and that's when Lou sits by the pool and watches. Max finally learned to swim under Chaya's tutelage, but even after he learns to swim, his dad is gone. Soon it's time for a race, and Max proposes to compete with Lou to test how fast he can swim. They still can't beat him, but they're not far apart, unbeknownst to either of them. Lou's current appearance is seen by Nick and, surprisingly, by the home teacher, and Nick's dad caught a mermaid a few years ago, but dad doesn't know where the mermaid went now. 
he could have escaped, he could have been released, or he could be dead. On the other hand, Lu goes home alone with Nick following behind. Upon arriving home, Lu runs the water and prepares to take a shower. Nick tries to take pictures for evidence, but Lu recognizes him. The innocent Lu eventually cannot resist the temptation of food and comes to Nick's house. Nick tests Lu with fish feed. When Nick's father returns, he recognizes that the mermaid looks familiar, so he looks up the photo he took when he caught the mermaid, and the two of them are exactly the same. Max sends Chaya home, only to have Chaya say that she is getting more and more fond of Lu, which startles Max. But in the next moment, Chaya explains that since Lu came, it feels like Max has changed a lot for the better. When they arrive at Chaya's house, Max's confession, already spoken, is overshadowed by the sound of a motorcycle, and he has to find something else to say to cover it up. The swimming competition finally arrives and everyone prepares in the lounge. Nick makes another sarcastic remark about Max, and to his surprise, Max fights back and hits him. The race went on fiercely, but the four of them worked well together. They even came in first place when they really went to Chaya. Lou hears Max's nervous heartbeat and exits to comfort him. You must believe in yourself. Soon it's time for Max to take the field. What Nick didn't expect is that Max couldn't take the lead. He was about to reach the finish line, but he got cramps. But Max did not give up. He tried to ease underwater. He swam hard to the finish line. And at this point, no matter what place he was in, at least this small group of friends and Lou would be happy for him. Wanting to will in anger, Nick pushed Lou into the pool. In the next second, Lou's legs turn into fishtails, exposing them to everyone. Nick's father, who had been waiting for a long time, took out his tranquilizer gun and tried to capture Lou. All the people around him run out of the room. Max goes to grab his gun and is slapped by Nick's dad. Lou, looking increasingly angry, jumps out of the water and makes his own. <laughs> Chaya and Kenan and Keen and even Nick are stopping him from shooting. Max takes Lou first, but Nick's dad shoots Lou anyway. The appearance of a mermaid in the school's swimming pool goes straight to the major media outlets. Max and Lou can only hide. Lou, who was shot with a tranquilizer gun, never woke up. Chaya brings food to the two, because Max's heartbeat was so loud. Lou was finally woken up, but he was still weak. He spits out the food he just ate and counts the 49 days, and he still fails. Lou thinks that the time is up, that there is no way for him to fulfill his grandfather's wish, and that he will soon turn into a bubble. Max cries that he doesn't want him anymore, and tells him to hurry back to the sea, but the mermaid no longer responds. At the beach, Grandpa tells Lou that his wish has been fulfilled and the mermaid can go home. And on the lighthouse, Lou's legs gradually return to a fish tail. On the other side, Nick's dad is still counting on catching Lou. Nick, however, sees in the study a photo of dad and his class teacher. On the other hand, Lou's fish tail came back, which means that Grandpa's wish is realized, and he can't finally go back to the sea. But the most important thing now is how to get him back. Luckily, that's when the homeroom teacher found them both and brought them to the school pool. Since the school was closed for a few days, it was the only place that was safer. Lou finally woke up after going into the water. Max saw that he was hungry, so he ran to the nearby supermarket to buy food. When he comes back, Lou and his homeroom teacher are gone. He searched the whole school but couldn't find them, so he could only go to Chaya and Keen to discuss what to do. Max, in order to get Kenan to help, told him what happened as well. The four of them had a discussion and agreed that Nick's dad had taken the two away. But one thing is strange. How did the homeroom teacher find Max and Lou? No one did not tell him where the two were hiding. But the most important thing now was to find Lou. Without thinking about it so much, they went straight to Nick's house. Nick looked at the fish feed and thought back to the time he had spent with Lou. Hearing a knock on the door, he opens it to meet the four Maxes. They ask Nick where he hid Lou. And Max even gets down on his knees and begs him. Nick finally relents and shows them a picture of his dad with his homeroom teacher. It turns out that the homeroom teacher had caught the mermaid ten years ago, but was let go by Max's grandfather. This time, no matter what, he will not lose this chance to make a name for himself. Nick then takes the four to the electrical box by the pool. Max also didn't realize that Lou was in such close proximity. After Cannon opens the door, inside is a lab that holds all sorts of materials for studying mermaids. But Lou has been moved. The five follow Nick's family's big truck to the harbor. They see Nick's dad rendezvousing with the homeroom teacher, and it's obvious that the truck is loaded with Lou. They charge towards the men on the other side with various tools. But after all, they are all children and were to fight strong adults. A few of the men were eventually subdued. Max desperately shouted in his heart, Lou, can you hear me? If you can't hear me, please respond. We're all trying to save you. You've got to help yourself. Don't you want to go back to the sea more than anything? If you don't get up, you'll never get back. Lou, in the truck? finally came to his senses at Max's shouts. He broke the glass tank with force and water flowed out of the truck to keep the mermaids from dying from lack of water. 
The home home teacher and Nick stand open the door. Lou takes advantage of the two men's inattention and knocks them out. And the subdued five rise to the occasion. Chaya and King wrangle the men. Nick goes to stop his dad. Max puts the mermaid on the cart and prepares to push it away. The home home teacher watches. Lou being rescued and gives the order to get him back. Dead or alive? And Nick's dad pushes Nick out of the way and fires a shot towards Max and Lou. Max blocked it for him. However, this time the gun wasn't filled with anesthetic, but poison. Max pushes Lou, only to feel his body getting heavier and heavier, his air and blood churning as he spits out a mouthful of blood. But he didn't stop, no matter what. He had to get Lou to the ocean, after going through so much. Now in his eyes, Lou was someone like himself, someone with emotions and feelings. He can't just watch him die. Max finally pushes Lou to the sea. But is at his limit himself. He tells Lou to hurry back to the ocean, but Lou knows that Max isn't going to make it, so he struggles to get up and to use his comeback from the dead skill one more time. Max knows that one more use of this ability and Lou will die. He struggles to get away, but is still no match for Lou's power. Lou gives all his energy to Max and fades away himself. And because Max saved Lou, he grants a wish at the last moment to bring Lou back to life. So in the end, Max lived a good life on land and Lou lived a happy life in the sea. Everything ends happily.